for the dark hours when you dare not close your eyes. No sleep. It's the No Sleep Podcast. No Sleep. Featuring stories from Reddit.com's No Sleep Forum. No Sleep. Join us as the sleepless hours tick past. Our next tale is entitled First Time at the Movies Written by Kay Hazelton and read by Wendy Corrigan When I was in the sixth grade, my friend Nicole and I were finally allowed by our parents to go see a movie by ourselves without our parents in the theatre with us. Her mum dropped us off at about 7 p.m., and we went inside and happily watched some movie. I don't even remember what it was. I was just thrilled at feeling grown up. The movie ended at about nine, and I called my mom to come pick us up. She said she would be there in about 10 minutes. In the meantime, as it was a warm summer night, we decided to walk outside and wander around for a while. We eventually ended up heading to the far end of the theater, near the exit to the highway, so that my mum wouldn't have to drive in too far. As we leaned against the bike racks, chatting, I noticed a dark green, old-looking Camry idling to the left of us, all the windows wide open, with the front passenger seat window facing us. It was directly next to a lamp post. I couldn't see the driver. I could make out that it was a male, but the car's lights were off. He was just a shadowed figure. I continued talking and laughing with Nicole, but I kept glancing back at the Camry, wondering what the driver was doing. I was suddenly intrigued by something glimmering in the front seat. It seemed to be coming from the driver's upper body, maybe his neck. Was it jewelry? I squinted at it. He almost seemed to be flashing it at me. I wondered if he was trying to get my attention. I nudged Nicole's arm, and she too began to glance at the man at the car. Against all better judgment, I took a tiny step toward the car and squinted again at the front seat. I decided the shiny thing was a necklace, but the way the driver was gripping at it unsettled me. I took another tiny step forward, and the driver jerked suddenly towards me, his neck seemingly slower than the rest of his body. I wanted to back up, run back into the theater, but I couldn't. Hey... That one word made me freeze up. His voice was plain and flat, even oddly polite, but it was terrifying. My mind was seized with dread. His voice had no uncertainty. He didn't seem startled or annoyed by my presence. He continued to twist and gnarl his hands at his necklace. Why was he doing that? Was he taking it off? Should I run? Those frantic thoughts passed through my mind in maybe five seconds before I heard a terrible squeal. He was gunning his engine. For no particular reason, I called out, Wait! He didn't slow down in the slightest, but he looked back at me, his face slowly tilted into a very slight, eerie smile. I looked at the lamppost, and my heart seemed to crash into my stomach. I realized he had not been wearing a necklace at all, He had been wrapping steel wire around his neck, and the rest of it had been tied to the lamppost. I wanted to close my eyes, but I couldn't. I watched his smile until I couldn't see his face anymore, but even then, I couldn't look away. I watched his retreating, dark silhouette in horror as he drove away. It seemed like he drove for miles, but in reality, it must have been only a few dozen feet. Nicole and I waited in silent horror, watching his figure in the front seat, watching the steel line get tenser and tenser. Then I watched the dark outline of his head get yanked roughly from his body. It was only then that Nicole and I began to scream and scream 